All right, guys. Cute little koi pond. Ah, it's going to be fun. Let's get started. Good morning, everybody, or afternoon or evening, depending on where you are in the world. I want to welcome you to Deliberately Creative. I'm Stephanie, and I'm here with a fun little koi pond. This is the actual traceable that you can download off of my website at deliberatelycreative.com. All the links are down below in the more information box. And this, I wouldn't use this as a traceable. I would use it as a reference mostly, but you can also use it as a coloring sheet. So, you know, if you don't really want to draw today or doodle, there's enough room around this that you could look at the fish or the lily pads and you could draw more of them on the page. That's a way to slowly get into doodling or drawing without um, too much stress because we want to take the stress away. We don't want this to be hard. If it's hard when you are starting out, you won't put in you know, the, the time to get better at it. So if you have something where you can start slowly, build your skills and grow, it makes a big difference. You don't tell somebody to start, um, oh, I don't know, drawing the Book of Kells with all of those Celtic knotworks without starting out learning how to draw circles and squares and triangles. <laughs> it's just what it is. So thank you guys so much for showing up today. I am so happy and we're just going to get started. I am, oh, and please let me know if there's any sound issues. I have been playing with it and hoping that I've got it all sorted out. Now I wanted to show you, this is my reference that I used. This is a little piece of watercolor paper that I drew on pencil about three years ago. And that's what I used to draw my picture that I used for today. So the bigger one's going to be my real reference, but you know, this is going to be a lot of fun. Now on the last video, the last live show, I showed this particular watercolor effect. Actually, we did this paint. Blah, we did this background painting in the last live show. So, uh, and that was the beta fish. And if you are, uh, <laughs> if you are having fun doing the beta fish on that watercolor background, you can use the same type of background for the koi pond. Um, I'm going to use this because why not? Right now, it's a little. I, I think I need to adjust my lighting just a smidge. It's like, come on, lighting, adjust. Adjust. It's really interesting. The, there we go. That's a little bit better. That doesn't look quite as blared out, blared out, blown out. There we go. Good morning. Oh, Gwen, that is a. Um, wonderful to hear that you were able to do some of the drawing and that it was going to, that it was bringing you a little bit of peace while you were there at the hospital with your mom. I really, I'm glad I can help you out that way. <laughs> All right. So what I want to do is start putting these fish on. And the reason why I put the fish on first is I want to get them placed. So I'll do it with pencil. That way we can erase out. As soon as I find my eraser, I had it in my hand. Where did I put it? Okay, I'll grab a different eraser. <laughs> so we're going to get those fish on first. Then we'll put on the uh, lily pads and then we'll start inking. So it this is a doodle drawing lesson. It's mostly a drawing lesson, but the drawing's really easy. Really easy. So let's go closer up on the canvas. There we go. And we've got that little guy so you can kind of see where I'm going. If you see, fish are very basic shape. This is like a big thick comma. So if I go and draw that, that's basically the fish, right? And I want another one over here. So I'm going to draw this one 
that's this guy over here. I'm going to draw him coming around. And I'm not worried about the color that's on here because I'm going to put a little bit more watercolor on here, probably with watercolor pencil. And yeah, it's hard to see in that white area. It'll get better. <laughs> It'll get better. His little fin is basically like a triangle. I'm not putting the little flippy bits out. I'll do that when I'm doing the uh, actual pen work. This side, I'm going to have his fin kind of line up and maybe stick out a little bit farther. He has a little, a little fin that's underneath that just sort of sticks out a bit. And then I like floofy tails on my fish. So I'm going to give him kind of a floofy tail right in front of his front fins is where his gills are, his little gill slit. And the eye is kind of down low ish and his front of his face, I'm going to give him like a little upside down, a half circle. And he is going to get the little, those little tendril whisker things that are underneath their chin. We're going to do it again. <laughs> Turn it around. If you look at that, see, it's basically the same fish. And I didn't put any of the decoration on him yet because I'm going to do that when we put in the pen. I hope you guys are having fun. Now, this is a beginner piece of artwork. This is something anybody can do and be successful, have fun and have something that you're, you know, happy with at the end. Remember drawing in pencil gives you a little bit more flexibility. It's not so permanent right away. I'm going to go ahead and say his little eyes are down here towards the front. His little face needs to be a little bit longer, maybe a little more pointy. His little gill spot, a uh, gill space. His little, oh look, I did do the little, little bit of zigzag on his wing, on his wings. Oh my gosh, for <laughs> fins and fowl. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we did. All right. And then doing this doodly style, we will be able to put in a lot of details that we want. I'm going to go ahead and put a big lily pad right here. See, that's just a circle. We're doing some circles and they're going to be circles that are overlapping each other. And some of the circles that are overlapping each other might be overlapping the fish a little bit too. Okay, those circles are the lily pads. That's all it's taking. So there. Oh, this will be pretty because we can do this all kinds of directions. I like artwork that you can turn it whichever way that makes you feel happy. So there we go. Now we're just going to grab the pen and start putting the pen work in. And uh, we're going to do, oh, on the top of him, on the top of him, there's that lovely fin on the top. See how easy that is? Basically, I did like a parenthesis and then a wiggly line. Good morning, Lise. Nice to see you. Guys, you know, I love that we are so international and so across the country. I hope that you guys are enjoying this time of day for a class. If you would like another type of time of day, please leave that in the comments below because what I'd like to do is have folks maybe vote up comments on with clicking a like button on them on the actual comments. Um, 
of the time of day and the place in country you are, place in the world you are. So if you wanted it to be at 10 a.m. Japan time, um, let me know that. But make sure you say where in the world it is because 10 a.m. my time and 10 a.m. Japan, totally different. <laughs> Good morning, Debbie. All right, so there we are. We've got this loosely drawn in. Now we're going to do it from with our pen. And the pen, make sure I picked up a pen that is right. I didn't pick up my pen that's writing. Where'd it go? There it is. Yeah, that's the one that's writing. So UK, hello, Fiona from the UK. Yeah, you know, guys, we we are international, and that is something that makes me so, so happy. I am going to go ahead and start drawing some of this, but what I want to do is actually get my circles, where the, especially where they're overlapping, because I might swing that tail around when I do my pen work get a little bit more of that tail fin sticking out. I don't want it to be quite under that circle. So lily pads, the one on top, I'm going to go right here and it's just a circle. These are kind of those lily pads like would be in Monet's garden that has the, um, has a rim around it and they're, they have a really strong mat underneath. Now these are littler than that. But that's kind of what I'm thinking and why these have a almost a bicycle wheel look to them. And then I'm going to go ahead and put the rim on so I know which direction this little guy is being built. I think this one's going to move over. I'm not going to draw the other side of that circle because it's underneath. I'm, I'm letting these guys kind of float and stack up on each other. Put your fish so that they're peeking in and out and that gives you, gives you a sense of depth in your painting, in your drawing, whichever way. One to three Eastern time. Joan, is that 1 to 3 p.m. or a.m. Eastern Time? <laughs> We've got to be specific, folks. <laughs> no, I know that it's 1, p 1 to 3 p.m. Eastern Time for you, Joan. I know that, that that's daytime, not nighttime. There we go. And I'm making these guys different sizes. I'm not... And look at that. I am not worried about if it's a perfect perfect circle because lily pads are not perfect circles so you don't have to worry about that having the color on the watercolor paper oh this is 140 pound watercolor paper and I used the um, Arteza it was the Arteza watercolor and I have although you can't really see it there's this light blue this kind of jade type of green or emeraldy type of green and the um, dark kind of Prussian blue that were just dropped on here. And this is dry and this was from last week. Now I'm going to move this one over just a little bit, maybe make it a little smaller. There we go. If you guys are new here, welcome. I am so excited by all of our new people joining us. And I have been checking out some, some more video creators and things like that, having fun. So if you have come from Mary the Atelier, um, her, her stream, Thank you and welcome. I hope that you are going to enjoy your time here. And if you're new here and you haven't heard of Mary, the Mary Atelier, she is a mixed media artist that I absolutely adore. And she goes live and does huge live sessions where she'll do, you know, four, five, eight hours. So you can come in and go out and she does 
crazy, crazy times, like 4.30 a.m. Central Time so that she can get daytime in Europe. Yeah. All right. I, I like that. So now we have the outlines of our lily pads. I can go and start putting my fishy in. So I am just going to get him drawn in. Now, something... I don't want his back going through that fin, so I'm going to get that fin drawn on now. Wobbly line, and it tapers down. This is a fantasy koi fish. It is not, not necessarily based totally in reality. Wouldn't this be a great card for Father's Day? or for a graduate. So now I'm going to give his little fins here, more like little finger type of fins. That's part of the doodling when you draw. You can adjust things. And I'm going to swing his tail like that and have it going underneath still. You don't see that the rest of his tail is going woohoo all over the place. I am going to go ahead and say that this tail is getting the uh, koi fish type treatment. So it's going to have those fun little lines going. There's gonna be lots of lines added here. I think I want it a little bit wider even. You can do that. You are the one in control of your artwork. I think that making cards with the betta fish, making cards with these koi, um, anybody want to do fishing lures? <laughs> I like those because they are so comical and cartoon-like, the fishing lures. And that's, that's the uh, little feeler whisker that's underneath the chin on him. And these really are very relaxing to do. You are not, you're not tied to a specific fish or a specific outcome. Look at that. I just added some more finny bit. There we go. Yeah, don't don't tie yourself down to that specific outcome. Give yourself room to have some playtime. Yeah, and I'm ready to just jump in and start playing. All right. Welcome back, Gina. All right. So now I'm going to start just drawing in this guy. His fin is underneath of that lily pad also. I might be making it more wobbly out there. Let's go up first. I think I'm going to put his little finny bit on the back, that dorsal fin. And then his little eyeball. And this one you see more of the eyeball. He's kind of peeking up around the around those lily pads. He's sort of looking up this way towards us. He's probably going, do I hide or do I go look for food? <laughs> and remember, doodling doesn't, doesn't have to be a, a stressful thing. This is, doodling is drawing without, um, without judgment. And our drawings are doing yeah okay good fishing lures for father's day and that will be wednesday's uh, live show give you enough time to be able to do a father's day card excellent and they're going to be very fun very simple shapes and full of color we might throw a bunch of color down on the paper and then draw fishing lures Remember, that's just a big comma shape or a single quote mark. 
on the, you know, how they do the quote marks on either side and they'll do single quotes. That's all the shape of this fish is. Give him behind. Now make sure that his fin, his little side fin is behind, going towards the back, behind the gills. You don't put the fins next to the eyeballs. They're behind the gills. And it's one of the things that makes it look a little bit, a little bit more real. These are not real looking. They are a little bit more comical, but not totally. They're doodly. They're cute. Cute fish. So there we go. Sweet and easy. Almost like fingers on that fin, isn't it? We'll be doing our lines. You're going to get lots and lots of lines on this guy. This, but they don't have to be, we don't have to do them quite as close together as I think this one. You're going to go, what on earth is she doing? What we did right there. So I just flipped the cor flipped a corner of his fin back. See? That's all it takes. And you could be like basically done at this point if you wanted to. I think I'm going to put the pen line details in on the lily pads. This is, um, you can make these as detailed as you want. I think I'm going to do them with a few less lines. The tails are going to have a few less lines. We are going to put some of those hatching lines in on the fish though. But I think I want to do one of the lily pads and I'm just kind of marking about where the center just with a dot about where the center is so I know where I'm starting and stopping from and then let your line break look at that letting the line break I'll let's see if I can go to go into the that side view so I'm drawing, I'm kind of lifting my pen up and letting the line break. I'm not, I'm not trying to draw perfect, perfect lines. I want them to break a little bit because, and by break, I mean, have those little spaces in there. They, there's water and there's light and things are shining on top of the, the, lily pads. Wow. For a person like me who has a bit of a lisp and I work very, very hard at not, um, overwhelming you, you guys with, <laughs> with that sound. I try very hard to speak clearly. And if anybody ever wondered why I speak the way I do, it's because I am trying to be very specific with my words so that I pronounce them clearly. And it was just one of those things I learned when I was young. I did go to a speech therapist for quite a while when I was in grade school. They had one in the school. So for quite a while, I was meeting with my speech therapist for working on some of those sounds. You can tell when I get excited. <laughs> yes, watercolor paper really helps with making the, uh, those texture lines because you can just drag the pen ever so slightly across the top of it. I'm going to move to this one right here, closer to, closer to the camera. 
And if you've noticed, I do move my paper. And, oh, I have this tape down with just some white artist tape that's not supposed to hurt the paper. I will hit it with the heat tool to pull it off because this tape has been on there since last Friday. And it is taped down to a piece of corrugated corrugated plastic. It's basically signboard plastic. So if you happen to have a political sign in your front yard at the end of the election time, if they don't come and pick it up and it's made with that coral plast, that plastic signboard, nab it. <laughs> and use it as backing for holding your paintings and drawings. It, it's nice and sturdy. It works really well as a surface to hold your, your artwork on. So there. And like I said, if you are ready to start coloring or painting, and you've already done this part of the drawing and you don't want to put all of the little extra lines in, go for it. Start, start coloring, start painting, have fun. Just because I'm slow doing something doesn't mean you have to be. I'm slow doing something because we have people coming in and out at different points in a video. And I like being able to share a few of the steps over and over again. You see how this one was slightly off center where I started that? That's okay. It's possibly just in perspective. We just see more of this one edge. I don't know. Oh, that's moving along really, really well. Now the center on this one is almost underneath of that top lily pad. It's almost underneath. And it doesn't matter that I'm making a dot as my target to hold on and get my lines to all coming from one converging spot in the middle. Because so many lines are getting put coming out of there, that space widens out anyway. There we go. This is moving along quite quickly. I hope that you are having fun. If you're new here, click that subscribe button, guys, and the notification bell, you know, so that uh, you'll be notified when new videos come up. Ah, yeah, I'm enjoying this. This is a quiet and peaceful type of art. It's, it's nice because all you need is a pen or pencil and some paper. And you can make cards, postcards, greeting cards, cards for Father's Day, cards for graduates, anybody. Card for mom just because you love her. Card for your grandma, your grandpa, your best friend. Okay, I'm being silly now. <laughs> Well, actually, I wasn't being silly. I meant the I meant every single person, and for anybody that you know, you think might need a smile, or you think might need just a note to say, "Hey, guys, I'm still thinking about you. I still care. Even though I can't be there right now, I still care." I'm getting ready to send out my postcard for my uh, winner in my Patreon for this month. And if you want to possibly be the winner of a postcard, you can sign up on my Patreon and 
the first of the month, I will, um, anybody who has uh, joined this month will be in the draw for the first for the in the first week or two of the next month so that way we can um, you know make sure that people who are supporting have the opportunity to win and if you are interested here is the link for my patreon and I do have coloring sheets that are exclusive for my patrons and photo references and on my if if you are a patron and you haven't checked your email recently there is a link and a password for you in your email or on the post on the patron page so that you have access to a private web page on my website with those coloring sheets with the rewards for my patrons so it's just little things, you know, it's not, it's, they're not, you know, super, super huge rewards and things like that. But I want you guys to know that I care about you. I think about my patrons. I think about my, my people here. So if you want this, this is free on my website, on my patterns and templates page. So you have access to, um, coloring pages or, you know, coloring pages, patterns, templates, because you could color this, <laughs> you know, and I really, really have fun. And I love our crew that is growing. The community is, is growing and building and, uh, yeah, it's, it's, so much fun. <laughs> I hope you guys like this angle. Do you want me to move back to the, well, actually I'm going to move back to the top view in just a second. I just, I'm chattering and, and drawing little broken dotted lines on all of these, but I've got all the lily pads now pretty much done. You can put more lines in if you wanted to. This, if you didn't put as many lines in, wouldn't that be pretty like as um, citrus? You know, le lemons and oranges and grapefruit. <laughs> uh, well, Lorianne, thank you so much. Yeah, that's kind of why the, the rewards aren't super huge on my Patreon. It's because most of my patrons are there because they want to support my studio. And um, they're not really looking for for gifts, but I think that it's nice to give you something in return. You're doing so much for me. Oh yes, I have a ton of templates. And as, as I say, the uh, patterns and templates page, you've got uh, lots of access. Now I'm putting the hatching on the side of his body so that way he feels like he's curved. The top of his body is going to be lighter. The bottom part of his body is deeper. You know, there we go. And well, there's Miss Katie. Thank you so much, Katie, for joining us today. I love that my patrons like to come and hang out and visit. And even if you're just turning the video on and letting it play in the background, that helps me. Truthfully, that helps as, as much as watching, um, the, the advertising, watching it for the full time, because then YouTube will actually share the video with people who like to watch things like you do. I do want to, to kind of give myself a little dotted line where a couple of those spots of color are going to be on this little guy. <laughs> yeah, the faces of the fish are actually really, really easy. You just want to make sure that they are, the eyes are forward of the gills and the fins are back of the gills. <laughs> So his little gill line is right here. 
His fin is behind the gills and his eyes are in front. And then I'm just going to color those eyeballs in. I'm leaving a sliver of light Since he's coming up kind of close, let's zoom to the top view now. Top view. There we go. See, I'm leaving a little sliver of light along that edge when I color it in. I'm not leaving a, a, a wide circle of light, just a little sliver. There we go. So yeah, watching the videos, turning them on, let them play while you're doing other things. Just have it on as background. It's kind of fun. I do that with a lot of my favorite video creators, artists. I love to listen to tutorials. I don't know. I might be a little odd that way, but I do. I like to listen to tutorials. And I think that one's actually flipped forward too. Little things, little things help. The top fin right up here, I'm going to say that it's got some shape to it. I'm curving those lines. See how I'm curving that line? And it matches up with that wiggly bit on the top. We're gonna flip around get this little guy. He's going to have a big orange spot on the top of his head right here. And, or a white spot. Ooh, maybe this one will be, will be orange with white. There we go. And then I'm going to get his little, his little wiggly lines. This is a lot like doing fabric. So things that you do for one type of art, you can use for other types of art. So you're not, um, <clears throat> ah, this is an eco pen, E-C-O, here, I'll just write it. Eco pen. I have it linked down below in the more information box. And surprisingly, it's a pigment ink that is waterproof. I've been using these pens. They come, they come in a tube like this. And it's a cardboard, the pen itself is a cardboard tube and the insert goes in. So you can recycle the cardboard tube or save it and use it for um, art projects. So there. <laughs> Thank you, Gina. I appreciate when our community just hops in and answers other people's questions. So if you know the answer to something, Go ahead and share and if you see I every once in a while I have a couple people who have the wrench um, they are moderators and kind of keep an eye on things also so if you have a question and you don't want to ask me for some reason you can ask one of them and they'll get me the question all right, so there's that little guy. He needs his eyeball colored in. I'm going to say that he has a little tiny touch of light. Again, it's right along an edge of the rim of his eye. And the one behind, the eyeball behind is pretty much all dark. Maybe a little bit of light. Maybe a little bit of light. I think that I'm going to be doing, there'll be a spot on the side there also. And now I'm going to do that cross hatching again. So that's just sort of like those um, divider lines 
little straight line on the or slanted line on the uh, keyboard and then I go back and do the slant the other way and where the lines come together most it becomes darker down at the bottom and then it works its way up and it looks like scales it's the easiest way to put scales in yeah I I am so sorry about that uh, the Canada stuff but any waterproof ink pen guys these just these are cheap pens um, 20 of them cost 12 bucks for waterproof pens so it's a pretty good deal um, but the uh, and they're not sponsoring me they are just the pens I happen to be using but micron pens pit pens um, I haven't, I can't remember if I tested the Vision Elite pen. Do I have one of those hanging out here? I've got one somewhere around here. Oh, there it is. Um, not sure. I'm going to draw with this uh, Uniball Vision Elite. This is an, an office pen. Okay, and then I'll let it dry, and then we'll test it. Whoop. It's not as thick of an ink. But, and not as fine of a tip. The tip on this is 0.38. If that was a question. I know I would have had that question. <laughs> and sometimes you guys ask questions right as I'm answering it. And that's because I try to anticipate the questions you guys have. Can, no, you can't change the, pay, the the payment date. So the payment date, um, my Patreon is set up so that at this point, the um, payment, if you sign up today, the payment won't be taken out until the first of next month. Um, and that's because I know you guys are coming in to support me and not just coming in for the prizes. So I'm more than happy to share the rewards with you, even when it's before you've actually paid me. So I, um, your payment won't come out until the first of the month. And if you want to support my channel and you don't want to do um, Patreon, I do have a, um, a PayPal link copying the PayPal link here. I'll just copy the whole thing. Um, I do have a PayPal link that you can donate and I've got that link on my website and I also have it on my, come on, paste. I also have it in the more information of the video. Come on, paste. There it goes. Yeah. Cross Oh, the income comes in on the third of the month. You know, they process the payments. Um, I say the first of the month. I think, let me double check. It might be the fifth of the month. I think I get my notification that the fifth of the month, the payments have been processed. So, but I don't guarantee that right at the moment because I'm not looking at my dashboard for that. I am going to put a few lines in on the fins, just a few. I'm not doing this as full and detailed as the beta fish. If you want a detailed how to draw super flippy fins, the beta fish video is the place I would recommend to check out. I am just giving this some very loose, quick little lines. I'm not worried if I'm going over, I can thicken up that outside edge just a little bit. That's a trick, a tip, a hack. Many people are like, how do you get such perfect lines on your doodles? And what it is, is I go back <laughs> And I will make sure that my lines start and stop with a complete line. And if it's too, you know, 
they keep going outside, I'll just add another line to cover up. All right. <laughs> there we go. Oh, and thank you guys so much. I am, I really appreciate you. I appreciate you watching, seriously, watching and sharing are huge. Even if you don't have money to, to toss into my, into my kitty, no worries. You know, we are all in this world crazy crazy world right now I think I'm gonna make it oh, my lines a little close right there and then spread them out so I'm making it closer down here at the um, spine and spreading them out as they go to the edge and you see how that makes it feel like it's compressed and it's attached lines closer together make it feel darker lines farther apart make it feel lighter or lighter colored there you go I might put just a couple little lines on those little finny bits down here his little wing fins his dorsal fins since I was trying to call them wings earlier. <laughs> and then we've got this little guy right here. We're going to maybe he's a little bit deeper. Ooh, he's deeper in the water. That's why he's more blue because he's deeper in the water. This little guy is a cleaner, clearer color. He's higher up. See how you can make things work? You're not, you're not limited. I took a piece of paper that already had color on it that wasn't specifically set up for this project. And you can do that. You can make backgrounds. I have some backgrounds around here that I'm really excited to use. They are, uh, they look like, like beach scenes. And can I find them right at the moment? No. Probably because I set them on the other table. I have a couple tables in my... Now, when I say I have a couple tables, these tables are all jammed right up against each other. So I've got my work table that I'm on here. I've got the drafting table that's sitting right to my side that's laying down flat as a table and then I have an old kitchen table that's small that has my cutting board that's jammed up right up against here <laughs> so uh, the space I'm in is about nine foot by ten foot it is the spare bedroom of the house and yeah it's um it's kind of fun to make things work. So the whole studio is this tiny little space. But I am not complaining about my tiny little space because you know what? I know that many people have even tinier spaces to work with. If all you've got is a little book that you set on your lap and your cup of pencils or your pen in Ziploc bags, your pens in bags, I've done that one too. So your studio is where, wherever you sit down to work. My husband works in the living room. He sits at the coffee table and uh, does all of his artwork from the couch on the coffee table. So he's leaning forward and doing all of his painting so and artwork. Um, you work where you are. Your studio is wherever you're working. I'm making this a little bit darker right underneath of that flippy up bit and right along the back edge I'm going to make it a little bit darker also oh my gosh look at that guys that is so cool yeah and this will be a patron card at probably 
soon. I might send out more than one. <laughs> hey there, Catherine. Are you on your lunch break? Oh, it's breakfast. <laughs> ah, thank you for joining the Patreon. Welcome as a new member of our crafty, our creative community. And uh, so, yeah. Yay, Catherine. Catherine is my niece, and she is amazingly creative also. I'm putting some shadow in right underneath by just adding a couple more lines to the fin. See? I want it to look like he's down under the water. His little fin is swing up underneath of that lily pad. And so, yes, Catherine uh, KM Crafts, she is growing her YouTube channel. I love her work. She does all kinds of things. She does drawing and painting and uh, beekeeping. She has some beekeeping videos also. Okay, and I'm going to be absolutely self-serving and and call out my son's YouTube channel also. His YouTube channel is Dark Age Growing. He has a seed seed selling business, garden seeds, and he's doing online sales of garden seed. A legitimate business. Uh, he is, he's got a business license and all of that. He's got his FDA sales slips. I believe he can only sell in the United States right now. But really cool. And he does uh, videos about his chickens and about his garden, um, kind of backyard homesteading type of stuff. So, <laughs> ah, sick day. Well, I hope that you are all cuddled up there with your bird on your shoulder, watching your videos, watching videos today, and maybe having a chance to do something to make yourself feel better. So... So there, okay, I'm advertising all of my friends and family. <laughs> but yeah, my son's YouTube channel just went over 1,300 subscribers. So we're, we're really excited about that. I am going to go ahead and put a little bit of a shadow line or a little bit of a line right here that's shadow. On the edge so it looks like this is tucked underneath most of it I will do with color but I want to just get some of that super deep shadow bit right there where they overlap on an edge all right good morning Jody okay yes this one looks like he's deeper in the water we'll make sure that the color is a little bit muted we're going to start doing that too. We're going to put color in on these guys because oh, I am excited. I do want here. Let's, let's go out to the wider view so you can, oh, look at that. So sweet. I am now going to grab my jar of colored pencils and I have, whoop, I have few different greens and a yellow to go on the, um, my brain is going dead, to go on the lily pads. Lily pads, guys. <laughs> greens and yellow to go on the lily pads. I have um, the Arteza, and these are all Arteza watercolor pencils. I've got the rose red, the Prussian blue, Tuscan sun, which is the deep yellow orange color. Spearmint green, which is a bluey green, lime green, which is a yellowy green, and spring green, which is a darker yellowy green. Fresh, 
pretty watercolor pencils. And I do have the white Prismacolor. And I said that I was going to do the spots on this one white. So what I'll do is I will just take this white and put it in. This is the regular wax colored pencil. So that way, when I put the yellow on here or orange on this fishy, it's going to resist putting the watercolor on those spots. Hello, Bree. Nice to see you. And then I am going to, that's rose red. Ooh, I need a, I need another color. Ooh. Okay, we're going to set this down and. <laughs> I think he is going to get, I have the blood orange and the pumpkin orange. Oh, <laughs> that's my coloring book. If you like my, um, my types of art, my doodle designs, I have, oh, this one is on a tote bag on Teespring and it's black and white. So you can use fabric paints and you can color it in or fabric markers and color it in. I may have to get one and do that. Or I might just draw it on my own bag because I can do that too. But this is available on um, Amazon for really cheap, 50 designs and it's like seven bucks. And it is available in many places around the world. So Sennelier has the acrylic squeeze paint bottles with fine tips. Yes, and I want to get them. That is part of what Patreon does. Patreon helps me to buy some of those special, special materials that I don't have a regular budget for. There we go. Oh, henna bottles. Right, because those are needle tip, uh, needle tip type bottles also. And then you can just get a uh, soft body paint that you can draw with. That is a wonderful idea. I'm going to go in. This is the pumpkin orange. It's going in along those shadow. And look at that. When I'm going across the, that white that I put on there, it's not sticking. I think that's pretty cool. It, it's nice because it gives you a bit of a resist. You don't have to. You don't have to be as fussy about keeping track of where the colors are. So that was the Tuscan Sun and the Blood Orange. And I'm going to put that some of that orange out here on the, the fins and leave it blank. And then so if you go to Amazon um, through my link, even though I don't have the henna bottles in my links, you can uh, start your your journey on Amazon by clicking on one of my links and I will get credit for you going to Amazon. Did you know that? Even if you're not buying anything that I've got in the store? Yeah, it's pretty cool. Now I'm just using a water brush. This is just a plastic tube that has water in it. There's a valve that um, sort of keeps the water from just gushing out. And I'm picking up some of the color that I put down and moving it out onto the fins just a little bit, just so there's a tiny touch and it makes it look like it's attached to the fish. <laughs> and I'm working those colors out. I probably will put a little bit more color on these, on the big fin out there, but see how quickly you can put color Oh, that's nice. I'm going to lighten him up just a smidge. Grab some of that color. 
You can lift these colors off to a certain extent. Oh, wonderful, Lori. I am so glad that you are enjoying the Arteza pencils. I do have links down below for Arteza. In, I sound like a commercial right now, I know. But I do have the links down below in the more information for Arteza. And I'm just taking and putting a little bit of this yellow, just because I want to, on the outer edges of the fins. Uh, again, I'm not looking at an actual reference. The only reference I had was this, uh, this little pencil sketch that I did about three years ago. And I just found it when I was cleaning up the table that sits next to me in the uh, living room. Sometimes things get lost on my table. Oh, that's pretty. All right. Now, this guy here, he's getting, um, he's getting deeper tone colors. This is the blood orange for his spots. And you don't have to put those little dotted line things that I did if you don't want to to mark the area where the spots are. The spots can, can be not outlined if you want them to be. But this guy, he's going to have just a, a bit of color on him. I will put a little bit of yellow on here. He will end up being a bit, a bit more greenish, maybe, if it mixes with that blue that's on there but I want him to be a little bit murkier, a little bit less vibrant because he's deeper. He's deeper in the pond. Lily ponds. This one you can sort of see through, but you can't see all the way to the bottom. It's reflecting those. What's what you see here is the light and shadows from the sky. And thank you, Catherine, for, for helping out. I appreciate, I appreciate your expertise. If anybody ever he hears me talking about my girls, they are my nieces because my I have one son and so my sister's girls are my girls. Part of that's because uh, the two oldest ones I took care of when they were when they were little babies until they were a year old and then could go to work with their mom. So I really had them in my house like my own kids and I didn't have to give birth to three kids, four kids. I only had to do one. <laughs> Selfish, self-serving, possibly, but you know what? I got to enjoy my girls grow and they've grown into beautiful women, all three of them. So I'm just getting all that, I'm just getting the pencil wet. And if I have a bit of that color, I'm moving it around. See how that one feels like it's deeper in the water because the background, <laughs> that's right. You are my girls. <laughs> so I'm going to go to the wide view so you can see it. You see how that feels? Like this guy is up higher in the water and he's deeper. Oh, that's so pretty. And truthfully, we could be done at any point. We could leave the lily pads not colored or we can color them. I'm going to color. I'm taking my Tuscan Sun. I'm going to give a... Actually, before I do that, I need to take some of that pencil out. Now, I didn't do that on the fish, I forgot. <laughs> the 
but that's okay because you know what a little bit of pencil on here doesn't hurt it 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 gives a road map of there we go it gives a road map kind of of the progression of a piece of artwork when you see the pencil lines but you know I can take some of it off and my pencil just sort of hit the paper over here hey there painting girly paint girly and my I just met you yesterday my brain just lost your name so please tell me your first name again and I want you paint girly to meet my niece Catherine KM crafts because you guys your channels are very similar and you're right about the same uh, subscribers too you guys are both coming up on your thousand soon and uh, yeah I'm I'm excited I am part of a 30-day challenge and we uh, just just started adding I can drop a bunch of these pencils now I only need my greens and a yellow maybe the maybe the Prussian blue drop those down ah, too many things in my hands Lori okay so yes I just I thought it was Lori but then I also have Lori Ann in here so my brain is like <laughs> welcome Lori <laughs> so Lori has a YouTube channel where she does mixed media art craft type things so she does drawing painting and uh, mixed media journals and things like that so check her out also I am uh, really excited because she's one of the members of my uh, accountability group on on that 30-day uh, YouTube challenge there we go see I'm just taking some of that Prussian blue in putting it in it's going to be my shadow and I've decided that since there's more light on this side that, that edge would catch some shadow this is watercolor pencil and as long as I don't dig it into the paper I let it glide across the top I can move this around so much yeah it's fun to be able to do that there we go <laughs> all right so now I'm going to take my darker green I'm gonna put or brighter Ooh, that is brighter that's okay a little bit more blue than I want I'm not going to use spearmint let's go with the spring and then I may just have to set that all down and grab out a different green so this is the big set of the Arteza watercolor pencils oh and this is the Arteza um, pouch pencil pouch which is really nice too I like it for storing my my stuff um, let's go with basil green stay <laughs> oh thank you guys so much and uh, Gina thank you for being here and have fun with your grandson and take care of your hand <laughs> Yeah, we've got such a lovely crew of people that come in here. I love to see everybody. Everybody. Okay, I'm going to go off of the top of my head. You do not see, need to see the top of my head. There we go. But really quick, throwing in this color. I like doing things like this. And if you do any of the artwork, you can share on Facebook, on my Facebook page. You can share on Pinterest. If you post things to your own Pinterest page and then you tag at Deliberately Creative, I will see it. 
cool thing about so many of these social media platforms and uh, information sharing platforms is that all you have to do is put at deliberately creative on pretty much any of them and I will get notified. See what I did there? I went dark in the center. I'm going a little bit darker out here. I'm saying these are bowed up just a smidge. Think about the way light hits. As it's going away, it tends to get darker. And as it comes up and it's closer to you, it's brighter. So there we go. We're going to do fishing lures on Wednesday. I am going to do a, it's going to be a little bit of a crafty thing, but I'm going to show you how to make a watercolor journal that you can doodle in. It's different than uh, Creation CC's pocket doodler, but you can certainly take it in your pocket. <laughs> so, I am excited to share that and we will do a little bit of doodling in it so you can see how fun it is to have something that you can make and it's only with a single piece of paper there's no sewing and you don't even have to put a cover on it if you don't want to yeah I'm really happy with these guys and as I said earlier, the um, now I need to brighten because I don't really want this part to end up being as murky. Because really, lily pads aren't underwater. So I'm going to use some yellow on here. to try and brighten it up a little bit. I might not be successful on that, and that's okay. I'm gonna put some yellow in the centers of these, since I have the yellow in my hand. And you notice I'm being kind of sloppy with my colors. I'm putting them in the general area. Okay, excuse me, I'm going to sneeze. Excuse me. <laughs> hey, lucky me. I didn't have you. I did, you didn't have to watch me sneeze. You just had to hear me sneeze. Sorry about that. Allergy season. Such a wonderful time. But I'm putting the colors in sort of, it looks haphazard, but, or scribbly. But that's because I'm going to now take my water brush. I know you like fishing lures, Miss Catherine. Miss Catherine KM Crafts is also a uh, fisher person. She, being here in the Northwest, we have a lot of opportunity to go to uh, rivers, lakes, ponds, streams, and fish. And she has been able to get out and do some of that because where she lives is really close to some bodies of water to be able to fish in. See how just a little bit of water just softens that color out. But color pencil, the watercolor pencil, doesn't tend to um, go whoosh all over your page. It's very controlled, and when you are learning watercolor or doing watercolor washes, that's so nice. Some pink or red to brighten. Thank you. That I will do that before I uh, go into the this one over here maybe a touch of pink 
kind of around those edges, maybe a little bit in the center. And if it doesn't work, I'll say, Catherine told me to do it. No, it's going to work just fine. It's going to look really pretty. It's going to make them almost flower-like without the flowers. Good call, Catherine. And I'm going to put a couple little spots of it out here, even on these other ones, so they all look like they go together. Um, Catherine, would you mind doing a quick uh, Google Translate a highlight and copy um, on the foreign language so that way we can respond appropriately? Since I don't know what's being said. <laughs> There we go. So if you highlight the, whenever you're, you know, doing something where you don't know what someone is saying, because it is a language that you're not versed in, Google has a quick little app and it's nothing you have to download that you can just go uh, highlight copy and then say Google Translate and it will bring up a box that you can paste into and you say auto um, auto detect language and then you can you know find out what the people are saying I don't have a chance to be able to do that Thank you so much, Catherine. And then, yeah, the pink. Oh my gosh, the pink. Isn't that pretty? And that was the fuchsia pink watercolor pencil. I have been having so much fun with this project. I love to color and I think Ooh, maybe that's what I'll do. On Friday, I will show you how to make your watercolor journal. And then I will have some artwork already put into the one I've made already. And I can we can do some coloring and some doodling together. Oh, the question was pink. There was a, um, so hopefully I've answered the question then. Thank you. There's, uh, Catherine, if you go up the chat just a little bit, I don't know if you can see it on your device. There were a couple more um, entries. I would love to be able to answer the questions if, the, if they were questions. And welcome to... Uh, D-M-A-L-T. Hopefully you're saying pleasant things because this is a very calm and pleasant type of stream. <laughs> All right. We are almost to the end of that. Uh, so for Friday, have a piece of watercolor paper that is like um, uh, eight and a half by, a, or, or a piece of cardstock paper or something that you can color on with pencils or doodle on uh, with pen or paint. And keep, you know, don't have it any smaller than eight by 10 because an eight by 10 is going to give you a very tiny book because this is a single page you will need a pair of scissors. Ooh, I like the shadow that happened right there. That Prussian blue makes beautiful shadows, even on colors that aren't blue. And 
And yes, doing the pink made uh, beautiful highlights. All right, since this guy is dry, ooh, but I'm not sure what direction I want him to be. I think I'm just going to put my little signature thing right next to a fin. So it blends in. And if a person wants to hang it upside down, they can. We're going to zoom out to the wide view. I am going to get this tape softened up. I'm just using a heat tool to warm up the tape. And break the adhesive, basically, is what I'm doing. I'm not doing it to dry the painting because the painting's pretty much dry. If you have any quick questions that you would like to ask, if you're new here, please click that subscribe button and the notification bell so you'll be notified when new videos go up. I am really excited for all of the fun that we have coming up. So you can see I didn't have my tape squish down as tightly when I did my background. You can clean that up with a little bit of white gouache. Whoa. Let's go back to the uh, close-up view. So there you go, guys. This is a fun, fun Koi card, koi pond with sunlight and lily pads and koi fish. Lots of fun. Enjo enjoying. Uh, I'm sorry, I do not speak Russian. I will put a reply in the comment section that I will use the... Um, that I will use the Google Translate on. There we go. So thank you guys so much. I appreciate you being here. Like, comment, subscribe, share, and go out and do something creative. Take care of yourself so you can take care of those around you. Oh, and up here, lots of art videos that you can click on to continue your journey through your creative day. See ya.